everybody, I'm Bill Evans for Peghead Nation, and today we're going to take a look at a great banjo made in the Czech Republic. This is called the Pruka Diamond Point. Yuroslav Pruka, or Jerry as he likes his American friends to call him, has been manufacturing banjos out of that part of Europe for almost 30 years now. And you'll find these days a Pruka banjo in the hands of players like Allison Brown, Jason Burleson, and Tony Furtado. I love this banjo. It's, it's in my personal collection. I paid money for it, and, uh, and I use it when I'm touring with Dan Crary and Steve Spurgeon. It's an alternative to the Gibson Flathead master tone sound. Definitely a mellower instrument with a setup that is really geared towards a contemporary player who might be playing a lot of single string and melodic style banjo. Let's take a look at uh, some of the ingredients that make it really great for contemporary playing. One is the fact that on this instrument, and uh, you can actually order this either way you want, but this instrument has a radiused fretboard. What that means is if you're looking at the top surface of the fingerboard of the instrument, it is curved. Now what that means, that it means that you also have to have a curved bridge, right? Because one has to go with the other. This gives a different feel to the instrument. Guitar players and even some mandolin players are used to the feeling of a radius fingerboard. The alternative, of course, is the flat fingerboard, which is what I have on my Gibson Granada and, and all of my other banjos. This is the only instrument I have that has a radius fingerboard. And it, it's a different feel. Um, the, it, it will have the feeling of a gr you have to reach further to go across. However, the curvature of the fingerboard oftentimes really matches the way the hand likes to contact the strings. And so I actually find, especially once I'm dialed in, that it's easier to play melodic and single string on an instrument that has a radius fingerboard. Now, one of the things about radius fingerboards that can be um, be a little dicey is that you can have problems with buzzing and intonation. But what I love about this instrument is that I've never had any of that happen, especially up the neck, you can have a lot of buzzing. But in this case, not only is the intonation just perfect everywhere, I've never had any buzzing issues. And I'll take this on tour and be in many different hum uh, humidity environments from the you know, dry southwest to, to wetter climates, and it's always come through right out of the case. So again, you can order this with a flat fingerboard or the radius fingerboard. The radius is definitely worth checking out. Um, another element that adds to, you know, you'll notice that this has a very deep kind of bassy sound, a lot of sustain. And that's partially due to the head, although I have the head about as tight on this banjo as I would a standard Gibson Master Tone. But again, it's the tone ring and the rim and, uh, that add to this sustained quality, and Jerry has worked very hard to bring that out in this banjo. A very, very cool aspect, though, of this instrument that I think adds to the richness of sound, I'm gonna take the strap off here, is that on this particular model, we have a one-piece back on the resonator, and it's hand-carved. So this is like a jazz guitar or a mandolin. On most banjos, what we have uh, is a laminated back, and the type of wood will match the wood of the neck. This is a mahogany banjo. This is actually a solid piece of mahogany that's carved. We'll take a look at the inside of the banjo in a minute, and I'll take the resonator off. But I want to kind of draw your attention to some of the, the, the cosmetic things that are really outstanding on this banjo. Uh, we've got beautiful, beautiful faux tortoiseshell binding around the, the resonator and also on both sides of the neck. We also have really state-of-the-art Keith tuners. Now, th these aren't the tuners that you would use uh, to play Scruggs style, you know, things like Flint Hill Special, but these are tuners that are made by Bill Keith's company. His son is now taking over the company, and these are standard tuners, but they work really, really well. Another aspect of it is that, you know, most of the metal parts on a conventional master tone banjo will, um, well, you'll start off with, with the brass, you have a copper overlay, and then you put uh, either, either gold plating or nickel or silver plating. And in this case, what Jerry has done is he's 
copper, he's put a coat of copper on it and then sealed it with the clear overcoat to give it a different kind of patina than you would you would ever have before. And it really looks great. Um, so we don't actually have either a, a gold or or a, a nickel, uh, nickel plating on this. It's just the copper with clear coat on top of that. All right, and uh, you know, I've done very, very little. I love to tinker with instruments, but I have done very, very little to mess with this instrument because it just came ready to go. And again, just to kind of show you a little bit of these intonation issues, one of the tunes I've played for many years is clarinet polka. And it starts all the way low here and goes all the way here. pretty tricky stuff just to wake up out of bed and do but at any rate we've got you know if you're going to be playing stuff up here where you really need the intonation this banjo will come through for you um, and if you need to bear down hard you know you can get close to the bridge and let your scruggs freak fr flag fr uh, fly <laughs> Gonna quite sound like an old Gibson, but it's definitely got a great rich sound and it works great on a microphone too. I'm getting a lot of volume when I use this instrument live. I've got the back off now from this Pruka Diamond Point banjo. We could take a little bit of a look under the hood, so to speak, and really a conventional setup, uh, much like a Gibson banjo's dual coordinating rods. But also, this rim is a little bit thicker than what you'll find on many conventional Gibson style banjos. And again, I think that has a lot to do with the resonant sound. The, the tone ring that Pruka is putting on this, especially made for this model, and it works really well in terms of matching, matching the wood. This is a maple rim, not a mahogany rim, but the wood on the neck and the resonator is mahogany. Here's a look at the inside of the resonator. I commented earlier that unlike most resonators, this is a one-piece back carved. So you can really kind of see the carving this way, almost like a jazz guitar or a mandolin. And I think that that one piece back really does a lot to, um, to give it this uh, unique sound. So there you have it. This is the Pruka Diamond Point Banjo. Check it out online. And uh, it's a great uh, choice for a professional quality instrument that is really, really geared towards um, contemporary and progressive styles. <laughs> Bill Evans for Peghead Nation, and thanks for joining me.